when we see guys with deficits that occur from taking finasteride, aromatase inhibitors, roaccutane, it's cellular energy deficiency as opposed to a, a mental disturbance to speak. Hair safe without using that word or that phrase. Uh, <laughs> how, you, how you build out your, your setup and well, stuff. Can, you can ramp up the test and then take finasteride, mm -hmm. even though that might, you know, cause impairment elsewhere. Not really a big fan of finasteride. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not. I mean, over the last few weeks, I've put back in a topical finasteride and minoxidil, just for the fact that obviously topical mm -hmm. finasteride's systemic absorption is a little bit lower than jutasteroid on the scalp. Um, but I guess, you know, as a tangent, we don't have any real topics prepared for today. Uh, Post-finasteride syndrome, mm -hmm. post, you know, Roaccutane syndrome, post aromatase inhibitor syndrome. I've slowly come to think that it's all like an NAD deficiency. I think we touched on this briefly before of hmm. NAD and NADP yes. being the cofactors. <laughs> yes. So no. obviously with post finasteride syndrome, like uh, we brought up before in the past, Steve, about it, I believe it being an NAD deficiency. That NAD being the cofactor of you know, the aromatase enzyme helping the 5-alpha reductase enzyme do its reduction reaction. When we see guys with uh, deficits that occur from taking finasteride, aromatase inhibitors, roaccutane, it's a it's cellular energy deficiency as opposed to a, a mental disturbance to speak. So once you start improving NAD biosynthesis and the pathways that feed into NAD production, uh, again, coming back to the mitochondria, mitochondria creating your neurotransmitters, being one of the guys that utilize that pool of NAD, you start to correct a lot of these um, neurotransmission problems that present themselves with post finasteride syndrome, like low libido, no sexual drive, impaired like serotonin dopamine levels. Hmm. And you can do like organic acid testing to prove the theory of looking at the metabolites of the neurotransmitters so quite often if you implement strategies and you know you have to deep dive you you look at like the citric acid cycle you look at a pentose 5 phosphate mm -hmm. pathway you look at all the ways of how we can make more nad in the body whether that is you know an expensive nad drip or is it an inexpensive thing like niacin vitamin b3 taking it in relatively decent dosage that gets converted to NMN and then onto NAD in our body. There's all these simple little strategies that we can do then to improve that. Uh, so cellular homeostasis that's gotten disturbed from blocking these enzymes. Hmm. Yeah, and, it, and you know, so ever since I released that video about post finasteride syndrome, some people incorporated that and said that their energy levels improved initially right, by increasing NAD plus levels, either from niacin or nicotinamide mononucleotide, nicotinamide riboside, uh, NAD plus injections, or upregulating mitochondrial function, which also contributes to NAD production. And then over time, the libido and the mood and that kind of stuff uh, comes up. But sometimes it has a little bit of a lag time of two or three months. Because it takes a while for all these metabolic processes and the enzymatic reactions to kind of normalize again. So these guys, they shut themselves down with finasteride or, or aromatase inhibitors or Accutane for that matter. All at higher dosages than is generally recommended because the acne is so severe and the hair loss is so severe and the, and the bloating and the water retention is, and the uh, gyno is so severe. So they overdo it. Right? It's, most of the time it's self-induced um, because the dosing protocol is incorrect. So... It, that means that they have to get themselves out of this hole because they have a chronic NAD plus deficiency. And then before everything is saturated again, similar to how magnesium saturation in bones takes a while um, or any other kind of micronutrient deficiency, after a couple of months, their libido starts to improve and their energy levels start to improve. Um, and then the erections can you know, be better again. Their focus goes up, right? Allopregnenolone levels start to restore. Um, but I think a lot of guys are just not persistent with it. And then because their libido or, or mood problems are not fixed within one or two administrations, they go from one thing to the next. And then before you know it, they look into sublingual uh, estrogen or estrogen mm -hmm. injections or sublingual diet testosterone 
or uh, you know a, a PT one for one and some max and oxytocin and whatnot stack. All right, so at least the guys that are persistent and just have a little bit of patience, um, they usually resolve themselves. And then there's a select group of people who like to just be miserable. And so, they'd, yeah, they'd rather talk about it than actually fix it. I have post-finasteroid post syndrome for the last five years, and they'd rather complain about it to get the sympathy uh, <laughs> than actually do something proactive about it. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how much you can fix with like, increasing your NAD plus levels and upregulating mitochondrial function. I just finished uh, the methylene blue deep dive and the SLU PP332 deep dive. And the Mod C deep dive is on the way. And when you read the scientific literature, it's just amazing how much things that can fix. It's it's such a difference, you know, but people don't want to spend the money. And methylene blue is the cheapest option, obviously. And uh, and niacin, right, a simple B, B100 niacin complex. Is the cheapest. Yeah, it would be the cheapest. I mean, of course, you can't control how much NAD plus you get downstream. But I think if you combine methylene blue with niacin, you already have a winning formula. And it's, that's very inexpensive. Dean, what do you think? Deuter thing, uh, yeah, I, I agree. And I mean, Deuter thing, like I said, one of the uh, internal users of NAD within the body is the pentose 5 pa pathway. So if the pentose 5 phosphate pathway is not working correctly in the body, which is often the case with problems surrounding insulin and insulin sensitivity, you're going to run into issues of NAD biosynthesis in the body as well. So, you know, it comes at two angles of quite often the easiest strategies here are nutritional deficiencies and stuff that have been self-induced. They're marginally, relatively easy to correct with, like you said, patience. <clears throat> Most people, and you do see it online, they do like to sort of almost uh, have a badge of honor that they've had that problem for so long when we're, we're really, you know, at this point we've... <laughs> understood that it isn't really a whole psychosomatic issue um that it's all in their head but on the other side of it you know, we've got decent strategies that are quite basic and premise that takes patience and time to to correct rather than mm. jumping from what's one thing to the next in terms of like the, the shiny object and you, you start getting all these yeah. crazy protocols like you said of injectable dhts DHB microdosing, you know, putting in some soft androgens to try and fix the mental problem and really, like, we're going to beat this to death and it's sort of going to be in the next five years, people will probably watch back these podcasts and go, those guys were really ahead of it in how important the mitochondria of cellular dysfunction and disease. It's really becoming apparent, you know, yeah. papers published 2024 of the link of mitochondria to disease and in some shape or format most diseases that present in the body can be brought back to the mitochondria becoming dysfunction so if we are you know inherently yeah. going to and look at offset disease especially if, you, if disease, you dive into go ahead sorry dean yeah go ahead no no i was going to go for it i was going to say like in terms of if you delve into mechanisms of disease mechanisms of aging it, it all comes back to the what's at its core that simple little microorganism or organelle in our body it's not really a microorganism an organelle that we've um accepted into our body that gives us so many benefits that when it becomes dysfunctional upsets everything energy neurotransmitter de development and production hormone production i done that uh post the other day about clomids and the use of clomids but like a you know, mm -hmm. the very basic level, what creates testosterone in your body? It's the mitochondria. Like, we're going to beat this to death. And then <laughs> eventually people will be like, oh, well, these guys are starting to talk about a sense now. Yeah, and uh, when when you start reading the literature, like about SLUPP332, MOTC, and some of the other mitochondrial enhancers, you see that it's all linked as a potential treatment of various diseases. And I honestly think, the longer I think about it, is that testosterone deficiency can also be solved by improving mitochondrial function, at least for uh, pregnenolone synthesis right, and then cholesterol metabolism. And then downstream, it with improved testicular function and improved antioxidant status, the testosterone synthesis should be enhanced also. Um, so I, I think it's in the end, it's all lifestyle problems where you don't treat your mitochondria well, you're in this chronic inflammatory state and chronic 
state of oxidative stress, and thus your mitochondria can't function. And as a result of that, they basically give you the middle finger and say, fuck you, no ATP, no pregnant alone, no nothing for you. Um, and then they basically starve you until all the mitochondria and you kind of end miserably. Mm. But it's it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's it's our lifestyle. And I think if you really focus on this, like the ancillaries we've done, right? Everybody adopted this. The mitochondria will be next. And, and then, you know, some optimization in that pathway. And then I think, like you said, a couple of years from now, people will think, oh, wait a minute, these guys were ahead of their time. Um, and hopefully the prices will come down of MOTC, SLU, and, and mitochondrial AIDS because it's not cheap. It's really cheap. Like myonostal tripyrophosphate um, helps with oxygen delivery and oxygen affinity of hemoglobin that optimizes mitochondrial function downstream. And that could be a potential treatment for all kinds of cardiovascular diseases, all kinds of cancer. I just did a deep dive on that today. So I think if you start combining all of these, these little things, these low-hanging fruit, a uh, quality of life, I mean, my quality of life is absolutely stellar right now with all these like uh, low micro adjustments. And uh, for the guys that suffer from, from diseases, I think that would be the first thing they look into besides mm -hmm. dietary changes and lifestyle changes.